I, I was unemployed and I decided instead of just hanging around Toronto, I sold everything that I owned and I took my bike and I went to Africa and I joined the 2003 Tour d'Afrique bike race, which was the first ever uh, and fastest human powered crossing of the African continent. So we went down that route that you can see there. It took us four months. It was 11,000 K. It was really hot. Um, for context, I left Toronto in February and it was minus 32. Uh, I started in Khartoum, Sudan in the middle of the Sahara Desert. It was plus 50. So I had an 82 degree swing, 83 degree swing in my physiology. And the first day was 170 K on the bike. And I missed camp and got lost at a Sudanese jail in the middle of the Sahara. Anyway, it's a long story, but, um, and then we entered into Ethiopia, stunningly beautiful, uh, very challenging environment. It, it wasn't as economically developed then as it is now. Things are going a bit better in Ethiopia. Uh, tr there was traffic everywhere in Kenya. It was brutal. Uh, and a few mosquitoes in Malawi. So there was like, you know, some significant challenges as we went through it. But there was one day that was really, really cool. So I, I was really sick because I drank Ethiopian water, which helped me to lose weight really fast, but was not great for riding my bike. And uh, was coming down off the back of a mountain, uh, back, back of a volcano out into the plains in, in Kenya. And I had had four flats that morning. I was fully in dysentery mode. I'm not going to get into the details of that, but I was, it was just struggling massively. And at one point after the fourth flat, I picked up my bike, super frustrated, and just launched off the road into some bushes. And these guys stood up with my bike out of the bushes. Uh, and I ended up spending the whole day with them. They took me back to their village. They played music. They brought me tea. Kids were coming up, sneaking up to me touching me and then running away screaming because they'd clearly never seen a, a white guy before. Definitely no white guys in spandex. So like that was a whole new experience for them. Uh, and then I eventually made my way back out to the road and back to camp. Hours later, I got picked up by a military truck and dropped off at my, at my camp. But the moment where I was sitting there with the kids in the village, listening to music, everyone's dancing, having tea was totally transcendent. It was an experience that will change me forever. One of the reasons why I continue to work so hard now is I realize that we have everything here in Canada that we could ever possibly imagine. So I have to leverage the fact that I have, you know, went to private school and attended university and I've been able to help kids at the hospital. I, I am driven as a result of being there and seeing that stuff, which is the point that I want to get to in this talk, which is that there's amazing experiences. There's the work that we do, but then there's peak experience that actually fundamentally changes the trajectory of your life. And when you do the heartfulness work and combined, combine mind, body, and emotions to, to enable you to do what matters to you the most, that fundamentally transforms us and takes us to another level. And that's what a, a framework that I want to share with you today is like, how do we actually get there? How do we do that consistently? How do we activate that in our lives that we have these amazing, incredible experiences that ultimately result in you doing things you would otherwise never imagine that you'd be able to do, plus have an impact in the world, plus discover that deep, powerful meaning and an impact that you can access when you actually do this right. Does that sound okay? All right, cool. That's what we'll do. So on that note, how do we actually do this? And now I've got to get back into neurophysiology. So there are five different states of being. And I think that the challenge is, is that we're, only, we're stuck in one of them most of the time. So we have gamma states. Gamma brainwave states are those transcendent moments. I'm sitting in the village. I'm listening to music. I'm dancing with little kids. I'm all in. I'm not thinking about anything else. It's all magic. Like everything is happening in that moment. A step down from that, and you're, oh, sorry, and your brain is sizzling. Everything's connected. Your brain is firing very, very rapidly. Everything's, everything's engaged. When you slow down slightly from that level, you end up in beta wave states, which is the hustle mode that I'm in right now. For sure, we're, I'm, I'm in beta. I'm communicating with you. I'm sharing ideas with you. Uh, 
that's a sales meeting, that's a presentation, that's when you are hustling and working, that's the state that most people, it's being busy but getting stuff done. The state down from that is alpha. You're slowing down a little bit further. The brain is calming down a little bit further. That's the state where you can get into when you're strategic thinking, when you're learning, uh, when you're planning. If we slow down even further from there, you enter into a theta wave state, which is when you're creative, when you're ideating, when you can play music, when you can do art, when you can crochet, those sorts of, not that you're gonna be doing a lot of crocheting, someone spoke to me about that earlier today, and they're like, that's how I get into creativity, it was perfect. And then if you go down even slower than that, you enter into sleep. So, and if you slow down further than that, you're, you're, you're dead. So like those are the, that's the range, like zero brain waves, that's flat, flat lining, We're, so we don't wanna go all the way there. But we have delta all the way through to gamma, and that's the range of human experience. My hypothesis here today is that we are mostly stuck in beta most of the time. Hustle, 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 go, 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 execute, execute, execute. And as a result, we can't experience creativity. We don't take the time to learn, and we definitely don't have that ability to experience transcendent moments in our lives, or even flow states, as often as we need to, to truly live life to its potential. And what I want to share with you today is how to move back and forth between those different brainwave states so you can access your heartfulness, you can access your brain's capabilities, you can access what your body is capable of. It's mind, body, and emotion all wrapped up together, rather than being stuck in busy, busy, busy all the time, just hustle and go, go, go. So we want to begin there, however. We'll start with beta, we'll dive into alpha, we'll slow down into theta, and then we'll finish with this gamma state where everything comes together. Uh, and that really does begin here with radical attention and brainwave states. So to draw your attention to what that actually is all about, I'll share with you this picture here, and I know it's black. So a few years ago, Judith, my wife, sat me down, as happens with couples, you sit down and have dinner, and uh, she said, we need to talk which is always an interesting way to start a dinner. Um, and then she said, I've been hiding something from you. So I did, yeah, exactly. I just start, you've been there before, obviously. Uh, I just started drinking some wine. And she said, so uh, I've been hiding something from you for eight years. And at that point, I'm drinking like straight out of the bottle. So, but I didn't say anything, which is like my number one rule in my life when I'm talking to Judith most of the time. Just, like, just listen, it serves me well. Anyway, so I've been hiding something from you for eight years. And then she said, so I know you've always wanted to swim with sharks. So for the last eight years, I've been taking $100 off every paycheck, putting it into a secret bank account. I'm like, what else are you hiding? And I didn't say, I didn't say that either, which is good. Uh, and I've got you a trip. We're going to go to Maldives, and we're going to go swim with sharks. I was like, thank God, it's just swimming with sharks. This is great. So we fly to the Indian Ocean. We land there. We put our stuff away. We go out onto the beach. And we're looking, the sun's going down, it's spectacular. Scuba instructor comes out and just says, all right, let's go. Now I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I'm like, perfect. Let's go into the shark-infested ocean as the sun's going down at dusk when sharks eat. This makes perfect sense, fired up. So in we go, go down. We're hanging off this wreck. There's a huge current. I'm a swimmer, so I'm just like loving being in the ocean and you know feeling the water and just being, being down there. And there's fish everywhere and turtles, it's magic. So I got the beach, scuba instructor, Judith, me, the deep, hanging off a wreck, and being the adrenaline junkie, what do you do when you're in shark-infested waters at night? You turn your flashlight off. So I turn off my flashlight, it goes pitch dark, that's the picture, took a GoPro image, like it's pitch black, and then all the luminescent, luminescence comes up, and you can start to be able to see what's going on around you. Uh, and then I felt something out in the deep, which is kind of weird, felt something, heartfulness, right? Like, and I turned on my flashlight and I pointed it out into the deep and a little tiny pinprick of light flashed back at me and then I saw this. Six foot black tip reef shark, stunningly beautiful, harmless apparently, whatever, freaking out. <laughs> and uh, what was really wild about that experience was that from the instant that I felt it, all the way through it swimming by, everything else in my life ceased to exist. It was just me and the shark. That's it, transparently. Judith, my wife, like, 
ceased to exist. Literally, that's how locked in I was. Which, as a result of my attention being 100% in on that moment, enabled me to experience everything about that, and I will remember it for the rest of my life. I remember the ripples of muscles going down the back of the shark. I remember the pores on its face, the little tiny teeth, like absolutely everything. When we control our attention, when we are deeply focused, that is what enables us to live life at the absolute limits of what we're capable of in this era of constant, unrelenting distraction. So as much as I criticized beta brainwave states to begin with, they are actually the key to us experiencing life. And we have to begin there. That's this whole focused execution ability. If we're going to be able to actually do anything, deeply engage, perform at our absolute best. I'm in beta right now. I'm 100% in on this moment. I'm not thinking about the future. I'm not thinking about the past. I am with you. I'm all in right now. Beta brainwave firing on all cylinders. I'm, and I'm in full-on execution mode. This is really, really key for us because what we need to do to be able to perform at our best. That's when we activate parts of the brain and we get all in on one specific thing. We're not multitasking, task switching back and forth. We've got our devices off. We're not being distracted by audio alerts that are going off. We're all in on that moment. Dinner with your partner, the phones are away. Uh, meetings with clients, phones are away. Trying to get work done, all the audio notifications are off. This is what we have to do to be able to be completely engaged in what it is that we're doing in order to enter into beta brainwave so we can perform at our absolute limits. So that's the framework. Focused execution pathway and beta brainwave states. How do we actually enter into that on a consistent way? I know you've been hearing about the five C's and these cards that you have on your desk, so I've got a few more C's to add for you. And they're gonna be mind, body, and heart. So you'll see that beginning with um, the corps in, in French. And the body has to be energized. So when you're in beta, when you're in focused execution, when you're performing at your highest level, you're physiologically, physically, need to be completely engaged. That's why Steve Jobs always did walking meetings around the Apple campus. If you've read his biography by Walter Isaacson, you'll notice that he did all of the meetings where they came up with the idea for the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod, iPod, iPhone, iPad, in that order, walking around the Apple campus. He also never sat in meetings, which is a habit that I have adopted recently. I'll put my stuff down, step behind the chair, put it in, and stand during meetings. My brain just works infinitely better. So the body has to be engaged and energized, which leads us into the second part, cerveau, brain, and that is where the mind itself is also engaged. And I love learning from children. Like this is Ingrid in the beach in Nicaragua where we go, my daughter. Like she's fully into what she's doing in that moment. I got this from far away. She didn't know that I was taking the pictures, but she's, body is active, body is energized, mind is completely engaged. And if you check this out from a neurophysiological perspective, this is the electrical activity inside the brain of a zebrafish at rest. Watch what happens when it starts to swim right here. Whole brain comes to life. We cannot separate mind and body and emotions despite our culture right now that tries to do so constantly. When we, come, when we move, the brain comes to life. And that is literally what we try to do when it comes to getting into beta and focused execution. The body is energized, the mind is absolutely deeply engaged, which then opens up the possibility to bring your heart online. And the way that I do that in focused execution is with music. So before this presentation, I sat out there, headphones in, travel with them constantly, they're in my bag somewhere, uh, and listened to music for half an hour to make sure that I was on fire for this particular moment. I was listening to a concert, actually, which charges me up. And I'll show you an image, hopefully this works, and, okay, context. This is Ingrid. I took her to a concert. It's my daughter, she's nine. She loves Brian Adams, okay? <laughs> which means that her dad plays a lot of Brian Adams in the house and she has learned to love Brian Adams. It's, it, it's, it's me. So we go front row. And the reason why I want to show this to you is when it plays, you will see that the music goes through her. When the guitar player comes over in front of her and starts jumping, a second later, you can see the music come through Ingrid. All right, so this is one of the ways in which we can activate this. I hope this works. Sweet, sweet. 
Cool thing is, you can see music come through her. We can activate all of it. The horrific part of that is she now thinks it's normal to sit front row. <clears throat> She's bankrupting me. Because we've been back three times to see him since. So here's the physiology of that. And this is really cool. We live in an era where one in five people, one in five Canadians, will access the medical system at some point because of a mental health related challenge. I'm sure we all know somebody or have ourselves struggled with depression and anxiety. This is a research paper that was published very recently. It shows the parts of the brain are activated by listening to music, which is incredible. And by the way, this part right here which is activated by music in the brain, also happens to be the part of the brain that controls your heart. So that link is there already, which is super cool. These areas of the brain that are upregulated by music are the exact same areas of the brain that are downregulated in depression. So we can use music as a counter to mental health challenges, which is really wild and very, very cool. This research goes on to show the seven C's of music. Kind of cool how that continuously keeps popping up, right? We have five C's here, seven C's of music. Uh, contact, cognition, copathy, which is empathy in two direction, communication, coordination, cooperation, and cohesion. Please use music to amplify your life. Get great speakers in your house. Listen to your music on the way to and from work. Listen in the gym. Play great tunes during dinner. Listen to different music when you're doing work that you need to focus and concentrate on and I think that it can totally amplify your life. Yes. Uh, so here's the thing around any type of music. Let's say you're on your way to work. ACDC might be a good choice, right? Um, you've had a crazy stressful day and you're on your way home to hang with your kids. ACDC suddenly becomes a very bad choice. So I will listen to Zeppelin on the way to work, for example, but I will always listen to Jack Johnson on the way home from work. If you have a dinner party, we'll put on specific music that people can listen to in the background and feel good about it, but it has to be certain things. Work. Find what music works for you and leverage it like crazy to drop in when you need to. Make sense? Okay, cool. Um, what destroys your ability to get into and stay in beta and to perform at your absolute best? Distraction. And that is alerts. That is social media, that is text messaging, that is email, that is phone calls, all of which are great when you're deliberate, but when it's out of your control is problematic. So we want to be taking control of that, especially when you need to get stuff done. Defend your attention. And here's a lesson, a takeaway for us on that that summarizes everything. So I'm sure you all remember Jose Bautista, right? Bat flip moment in the playoffs for the Blue Jays, 2015 playoffs, goes up to the plate, hits a home run to win the game, Absolutely fantastic. Uh, as a baseball fan, I, I really enjoyed that. Here's what he said afterwards. He said, when I walked out to the plate, 50,000 people went crazy. My adrenaline wasn't 10 out of 10. It was 10 million out of 10. But it was so loud that it was quiet. All that I could see was the pitcher. Everything else was out of focus. And on the, winning on the pitch where I hit the home run, all that I could see was the pitcher's shoulder. And when the ball came over the shoulder, I saw how the hand, the fingers were positioned on the ball. And I knew what pitch was coming. And I was able to hit the home run to win the game. Point for us being that as pressure increases, our attention and focus must narrow. And that is a way for you to consider that defending your attention will determine your success and your ability to execute in moments when it matters the most. When you're relaxing on the couch on the weekend with nothing going on, by all means, scroll through Facebook, check up on all of your friends. But when you're on a deadline and you need to perform, all of those distractions go away, put on the headphones, get some great music going, 
energize your body, engage your mind, and, and, and drop into beta waves so that you can perform at your absolute best in that moment.